Hey everybody, welcome back. These are some messy Am I the A-hole posts that almost ruined the wedding. Oh, rise to the honor of that silent? Never gets old. Sure, 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 sure. Am I the a-hole for not allowing my daughter to significantly alter my wedding dress? My 44 female daughter, 25 female, is getting married later this year to her girlfriend, 27 female. Okay, so it's your wedding dress that she wants to wear. Got it, got it. I've always dreamed of walking her down the aisle. My husband passed when she was a child and she enjoyed talking about a future wedding and playing bride when she was a child, picking flowers and colors and venues. She loved watching the videos of my wedding and seeing me and her father get married. And it was important in our bonding. When she was 13, I promised her my wedding dress. I want to know like what the wedding dress looks like, because if I'm talking about my mom's wedding dress, there is no way in hell I would wear that wedding dress as is. It looked beautiful on her, but it was so unbelievably 80s. It was gold, first of all. <laughs> she had a gold wedding dress. I always thought it would be nice to find a way to like incorporate like a piece of it or something. The big sleeves and the fabric was so unbelievably 80s, I could not wear it as is. So I'm curious if your wedding dress was really out of date or not. However, her clothing style is more manly. She began refusing to wear dresses or skirts when she was in her late teens, even trying to demand her school allow her to wear trousers. And it was difficult convincing her to wear dresses to formal events. She's gone through phases of wanting short hair, wanting to be a boy and getting tattoos. I've always been very supportive of all of this, even when she met her girlfriend and proposed to her. I've encouraged her as much as I can. I am contributing significantly to the wedding. So what did she want to do? She wanted to turn it into pants. What does she want to do to it? I recently called and asked her when she wanted me to bring over the dress as it would need slight alterations. And she dropped the bombshell on me that she wanted to wear a suit and have my wedding dress altered to remove the skirt portion so that the bodice could be worn without trousers. Ah, yeah, that is a significant change. You won't have your wedding dress. The thing is, is you did promise her that she would be able to wear it. So, I mean, that's kind of your first problem, but that's a normal thing for like a mom to do. They offer, you know, their daughter to wear, you know, a keepsake or like family heirloom for the wedding, something their mothers wore, their grandmothers wore, et cetera, et cetera. This is the way. At first I agreed. Okay, there's another problem. But dragged my feet bringing the dress over. I guess you needed some time to mull it over. After a few weeks, I changed my mind and told her that the dress was important to me and I didn't want her to ruin it. I feel like you felt a little pressured into giving her the dress because you did promise her, but I feel like I wish you said that you were a little uncomfortable with her changing it to that degree sooner. When I promised her the dress, it was because I thought she would wear it as a dress and she will only get to wear it if it is a dress. I offered her that her girlfriend could wear it as a dress instead, but my daughter said that that would still be ruining it. Her girlfriend is a much larger woman than me, so it would need more altering and has since not been answering my messages, except with saying that the dress would be a connection to her dad. So she's disappointed to not have it. I offered to go dress shopping with her for a replacement, but apparently some of our family think I'm stopping her having the dress because I disagree with her being masculine. Am I the a-hole for telling her she can have it as a dress or not have it at all? I may be the a-hole because I promised it to her. Yeah, but again, that's kind of something that moms do, you know, like they do promise those things. And realistically, she would have had to alter it either way. What happens if she was a different size? But that was when she was very young and before I knew she wanted to change it. I feel like you are fair in not wanting her to change your dress. I feel like that's a fair thing if you wanted to keep your dress as a keepsake or whatever. I don't think that you should have promised it to her the second time once you knew that she wanted to change the dress. Also probably been a little more understanding of the fact that she probably would have had to change it anyway. But let's see what Reddit had to say. Not the a-hole. You offer to lend or let her use your dress. Not tear it apart in a way that destroys it forever. This dress is yours with living, breathing memories attached to it. If it can't be returned to you in its original state, then no, you are not the a-hole for changing your mind about this. You might need to ask a professional seamstress about what is possible. I'm sure you have other possessions that actually belong to her dad. That's a good point. I'm sure that he had something else, something that he wore to your wedding that she could wear instead. She may be able to incorporate one of them or recreate your 
bouquet, cake, or something similar if that connection is what she is seeking. If we're going by what she said in this post, she said she promised her my wedding dress. It kind of implies that you would give it to her. Just saying. I see what this commenter is saying, that you would lend it to her, but that's not what she said in the post. You know what I'm saying? Or since the daughter likes to dress more masculine, why not wear something of her dad's that would be even more of a direct connection than the dress? Agreed. I'm failing to understand why your wedding dress is a connection to her dad. If that's what's important, I feel like there's something that she could use that would be a better option. Unless that's just an excuse. Take a bit of fabric from the skirt and use it as a pocket square for her wedding suit. There you go. That's a good option. I've always thought about taking a little piece of my mom's dress, using it as like a garter or something, or like something to wrap the bouquet with. But you're not going to be carrying the bouquet, are you? Not the a-hole. She lost her father, but you also lost her husband. And it makes complete sense that you're sentimental about this dress and don't want it altered beyond recognition. I agree with this. This is totally fair. Parents don't need to give every part of themselves to their children. You are allowed your own feelings and needs and wanting to preserve the dress you married your late husband in is totally valid. You made that promise in good faith and I'm sure would honor it if it didn't mean completely changing this memento. I'm gonna go with what Reddit said on this. Not the a-hole. But I think maybe you could have chosen your words a little better. That's all I'm gonna say. Update. Ooh, interesting. I recently posted about my daughter surprising me by wanting to turn my wedding dress into a suit, which I refused despite having promised her because the reality hurt me. I was upset and it made me feel better to see people agree with me, but the comments that made me upset made me think the most about the future and helped me empathize with my daughter. My daughter came over tonight and apologized for ignoring me and explained that she always thought she'd been promised she could have the dress to own rather than borrow. So she was sad to have lost that dream. This is my thing. She thought that she was going to be given the dress. That's why it's like a little wishy-washy for me. I apologize for it if I had ever come off as non-supportive of her. As many comments said I sounded homophobic and that I wanted to be clear that I'm not. I respect and love my daughter. We talked about many things, especially my husband, how his presence could still be felt on the day, how my daughter felt jealous that her fiance would get to share the day with both of her parents while she only has a memory. We watched the wedding video again. It's been a few years and cried a bit. We also had some wine, so I apologize if this is not completely clear. I'm very drunk and a little nauseous. Love a good drunk Reddit spill. I told her I hadn't realized how much giving the dress up would hurt and that I didn't think I could completely sacrifice it. Fair. I'm glad you guys talked about it and that I would talk to a tailor about it if the dress could be separated and put back together and returned to me. But if not, then I would help her to find a suit as an alternative and give her some of the dress's lining to use in it. That's a good compromise, I think. I also surprised her with her father's wedding cufflinks to wear. Great. Love that. As suggested by many commenters and my veil in case her fiance wanted to wear it. And she was extremely happy with this as a compromise. She asked if she could try the dress on just to see what it would be like. I will admit, I was hoping she would change her mind once she had it on. She let me do her hair and makeup however I felt like. She was laughing so hard because it reminded her of when I did her braids for school. She picked out things for me to wear too in her style just to see how I would look and we took pictures together and danced. She looked beautiful in the dress. It was like I had always dreamed when she was my little girl, but she didn't look like herself. Oh, that's sweet. Oh. Suddenly I knew a lot of you had been right. I hugged her and apologized and told her to take it and do whatever she wanted. Once. She's gone home now and some parts of me regret giving it to her. I've been very teary putting away the photos, but more than that, I'm thankful I got to see what I thought would happen and realize it wasn't right and that I can say goodbye to the expectations I had for so long. My daughter is happy as herself and it is an honor that she wants to share it with me. <laughs> yeah. I can tell you're a little buzzed in this, babes. <laughs> oh, that is so sweet. I completely empathize with the mother not wanting to see her dress change entirely. But at the end of the day, it's like, I don't know. I just think that you can't really push your style or your expectations onto your kids. Says who? For example, me. My mom offered me her wedding dress, but I can't see myself ever wearing it as is. It's really just not my style. It was 80s for Christ's sakes. There is no way I would wear it the way that it is. Do we see this gold dress? <laughs> <laughs> it is gold. She looks stunning in it. Like, honestly, she looks like a princess, but it's so 80s. There's no way. There's no way. Don't think of it as
Anna's memories being altered along with the dress. Think of it as a family memento with even more happy memories attached to it being passed down. Mementos are what you make them. You did the right thing. I think it's beautiful that you did that. I mean, realistically, your dress is gonna stay in your closet. You're gonna look at it like what? Maybe once every five years or something. Maybe put it on once in a while. Is it really that important? It's just a thing, you know? It might be important to some people, but I think you made the right decision in giving it to your daughter. Am I the a-hole for telling my daughter she has to understand that choosing this wedding date would result in my family not going? Two-ish years ago, my brother, my nephew, and my mother were in a car accident. My mother died instantly. Oh, that's so sad. My brother and nephew passed away the next day. Oh, that is horrific. My family was small. Me, my husband, daughter, parents, brother, wife, and two nephews. Their loss was devastating for my life and for everyone, even worse for my father and my sister-in-law. One year ago, my daughter, Betty, 25 female, was proposed by her fiance and preparations began. During this process, they chose the date and based on the day they met, added seven years ago. That day is exactly two years since the death of my brother and nephew. Oh, interesting. I tried to talk to her about moving it because it is still a very difficult date for our family and even for myself, but she insisted saying the venue had that date available and it would be perfect because all the other available dates aren't so good and wouldn't be so important. I respected her decision. That's a tough one. Recently, she sent the invitations to everyone as, as I predicted. My sister-in-law, my nephew, and my father responded that they would not attend. And despite not telling her, my father and sister-in-law told me that date choice was a a sound offense to them. And they have every right to feel that way. Honestly, it's not like it's been a long time. It's been two years. I think it would be rather hard to celebrate someone else's happy day when it's a day that's just so dark and sad. And it's interesting when dates like that come about, it's almost like your body just sort of remembers, even if you don't exactly know why. And like, for some reason you're just sad and you can't explain it. And then you realize like, oh, this is like the date that my grandfather died. It's interesting how that happens. I decided to remain neutral and I confirmed my presence and my husband. Today, my daughter called me unhappy that no one but us confirmed. My husband doesn't have family on his side and her family part was empty and she expected everyone to go on that date, even more so after she explained the reason to them about the date, but they still refused. I feel like she's being a little bit inconsiderate of your feelings, to be honest. <laughs> like it's also her family that passed away on this date. I tried to be supportive but I said, love, this date is difficult even for me, but I will go to your wedding. But you have to understand that this choice of date has this consequence and you would have to deal with the consequences of your choices. She exploded at me saying that everyone is against her. It's not her fault the dates coincided and everyone could make an effort to go for a few hours for her. But they decided just not to go and I was basically saying, I told you so. I mean, there were other dates. It's not like this was the only date for like a year. There were other dates. You told her in advance. I don't know. I feel like in this scenario, she's got to be a little more understanding than she's being. She hung up with me without answering and we still haven't spoken. My husband said he understands me, but I should have stayed away from it. Am I the a-hole? I feel like you're trying to communicate to her how devastating this was and she's kind of only thinking about herself. This is the thing with people and their friggin' weddings. Just because you're getting married, that does not mean that everybody has to put their lives on hold because it's your wedding. I know it's like you get the one day, right? Oh, it's her wedding. It's her wedding. It's his wedding, it's his wedding. And it's like, yeah, okay. But like to a certain extent, we don't just automatically become your bitch if you're getting married. <laughs> I'll become the bitch, but I will make it known that I don't appreciate being the bitch. <laughs> I feel like your daughter is somewhat being an a-hole. I feel like she's not really considering the fact that this date has some pretty sad, pretty significant sad memories attached to it. And it is somewhat insulting to your family to assume that they would be down to celebrate on that day. <laughs> <laughs> Especially because of how little time has passed. She's being a bit of a bridezilla, I'm not gonna lie. Not the a-hole. I mean, you told her exactly why this would happen and she didn't listen. I think she was more upset in front of you than at you, if that makes sense. She's venting, but also kind of thoughtless to think that everyone would just swallow their grief to watch her get married on a really painful anniversary. This is the thing. Although getting married is the most important thing for you, it is not for everybody else. I'm a bit shocked that the daughter had no pain associated with that date. Yeah, 
I'm confused about that too. Like why do we want to celebrate on a day that's so sad where multiple family members died? That's weird to me. Sociopaths get shit done fab. That was her grandmother, uncle, and cousin. And only two years ago, sort of heartless. I agree. Not a lot of empathy going on. I'm wondering if it does hurt her and she's just trying to change that specific date into something good. Could be, but she didn't really articulate that. So I think that we do need to observe these dates and respect them, especially when they're fresh. The thing is no one but her and her husband and maybe their parents are gonna remember their wedding date in five years, but they will never forget the date they lost their loved ones. Losing a loved one, no less three of them, I feel like is a lot more significant than someone getting married. You are not the a-hole, my dear. You might need to tell your daughter she's being a bit of a bradzilla. And I disagree with your husband. This whole like stay out of it thing, I think that we do need to be telling people when they're being really, really inconsiderate. <laughs> Cause how else are they ever gonna know? By force. Am I the a-hole for not wanting to follow my sister-in-law's rules for her wedding and saying her insecurities aren't my fault? Not a fan of telling people that they're insecure, but I'll give you the benefit of the doubt for now. My female 27, brother, male 34, and his fiance, female 31, are getting married real soon. My husband and I got our invitation, all fine. However, this is the problem that I'm having with them. I'm not a bridesmaid or in the bridal party because I have a baby. I was either pregnant with a newborn during most of the wedding planning, it was for the best. So I'm just a regular guest as everyone else, right? Well, my brother and his fiance came over a few days after they sent the invitations because they wanted to talk to me. My future sister-in-law basically told me she's gotten a dress for me and she'll love for me to wear it to the wedding. I was kind of like, oh, okay, thanks, but why, you know? Was it ugly or something? Did she make you wear a paper bag? <laughs> At first she didn't want to tell me why they've chosen the dress for me, but finally she told me that I tend to draw too much attention to me. So you're prettier than her. Am I understanding that correctly? Last year, our older brother got married and my future sister-in-law thinks that she doesn't want to risk having me show up similarly to their wedding. By the way, I wasn't wearing an inappropriate dress or white or anything like that. I was wearing a normal formal dress. Okay, so you're like literally just pretty. <laughs> <laughs> I was confused by all of this and I asked what she meant because as I said, I know how to dress up for a wedding. I reassured her she wouldn't have to worry about being outshined because for starters, it's her wedding day and everyone will be paying attention to the bride and groom. And secondly, I won't wear an inappropriate dress with like too much cleavage or something. Her family's rather conservative. So I thought maybe she was more scared of her family's reactions. Oh God. We discussed this for a while and she told me that the problem is my weight. She's a little overweight and I'm not. Always had problems gaining weight even while pregnant. So she feels insecure. And that's why she wants me to wear a dress that would cover me completely? Oh, absolutely not. That is fucking insane. You are so Delulu, dude. Wow. This is where I think I might be the a-hole. I told her that her insecurities were not my problem. Normally, I'm not really a fan of that statement, but I think the way that you've described it, I think that that was a fair response. And that it was weird to ask me to wear a certain dress just because I'm skinnier than her. Agreed. That's not an a-hole thing to say. If anyone's being an a-hole, it's her. She told me she knew I'd have this this reaction because supposedly I'd always want to be the focus of attention. Is your attention always on her or does she always want to be the focus of attention? <laughs> to the bride, you're sounding like a secondary character in your own story, babes. She also said that my life has always been easier and it's not fair I want to steal her wedding day as well. What the f are you talking about? Oh God. I asked her if she was doing this with every other woman who was skidding her attending the wedding and she said no. So I told her that's the shitty move. She's jealous of you. I find it strange that she talked to you about it in this way. Way. It sucks feeling insecure next to somebody else. It does suck having those insecurities and not feeling beautiful on your wedding day. I empathize with that, but like the wedding day hasn't even happened yet and she's already feeling insecure. Why invite you at all? Well, they're family, so they kind of have to be invited, but I wouldn't go. I like literally wouldn't go. <laughs> we argued that my husband and brother got between us. So they argued as well. And finally we kicked them out, but not before I told them to enjoy their damn day because I wasn't attending the wedding. I'm not going to attend a wedding where somebody wants to like literally cover me from head to toe, the veil of shame. That is up. And they accuse me of being a drama queen and wanting to embarrass them by not going. But you want to embarrass her by making her wear a dress that she doesn't look good in. Well, I'm more calm and this has caused quite a fight in our family as well. I admit that I was so tired and stressed that day because my baby had been sick the prior day and night. So I don't know, do you think I exaggerated here or were they truly rude to ask me something like this? Yeah, they were not only rude, but like delusional. Guess what? In life, there's going to be people that are way better looking than you. And it's easy to make those people the villain and blame them for all our problems. However, 
those people can't help the way that they look. And expecting them to look ugly so that you look better is so Delulu, man. I don't care if you get married. I don't care if you're the queen of England. Rest your soul. If someone tells me that they only want me at their wedding if I look like shit, I am not going. If you're so worried about someone upstaging you, then that person just shouldn't go in general. Or you need to get the f over it. Not the a-hole. I agree with your decision not to attend the wedding. Sister-in-law can give any explanation she wants for why you're not there, but I would definitely answer honestly if anyone asked you why you didn't attend. It's interesting that they were worried about being embarrassed that you're not there. And it's like, this is so embarrassing. Like, how are you not embarrassed asking someone to do that? I would get ahead of the story and tell your parents and close family exactly what happened so they don't poison the well. The truth is the girl probably knows how ridiculous this is deep down and would never tell the truth about the situation because it is ridiculous. There is no way that like a coherent person wouldn't think this is ridiculous. You are not the a-hole, my dear. I'm glad you're not going to that wedding. Her. Subscribe!